Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Finland once again for the first time in what feels like a very long while. Now, as always with my Finnish reviews, I want to give a massive shout out and thank you to Riku Sinaxanaho, my Finnish beer mule. It's thanks to him that you guys get to enjoy these Finnish beer reviews here on Rampant Lion Reviews. As I've told you many a time, Finnish beer is very difficult to get outside of Finland for the most part. Riku's got his own little beer mule network in Finland and he sorts me out with things over here too, which is always great. It's lovely to have people like this that contribute to your channel. So as always, a massive kipis and kitos to Riku for helping to make this review possible. Uh, but the, review, the beer we're going to have a look at today... It's from a brewery that has featured on the channel once before, albeit that was as an out and about video, not as a sit down review. But it's a style that I very much enjoy, one that I don't get to review all that often on the channel actually. And if memory serves me correctly, this will be the first Finnish brewed example of this style that I've both tried or reviewed. So uh, yeah, this should make for quite an interesting one. Hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So, uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to go to Espoo, which is just to the west of Helsinki, the Finnish capital in the south of the country. We're going to go to the southeast of Espoo, to the Otaniemi district, to the Aalto University campus, and we're going to have a look then at my first sit-down beer from Fat Lizard Brewing Company. So, this particular beer is called Lake Bodom Lager. It comes in at 5% ABV, and this one is a Vienna Lager according to Untapped. So, um, yeah, this one should be quite interesting. The name, of course, is a reference to uh, the Finnish band Children of Bodom, who are from Espoo as well, apparently. And I guess you could say Bodom After Midnight as well, which came a little bit later on. But, yeah, this is one that I actually bought for myself when we went to visit the Fat Lizard Tap Room, but uh, Riku took it away with him and then included it in the last box that he sent me so uh yeah be quite cool i wanted to go and just have a little look at fat lizard because we hadn't tried anything from them before but these guys are a pretty interesting company actually and as i say this is my first finnish brewed vienna lager if memory serves me correctly so let's crack on with this one then and see how we go as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done, or will do in the future I should say, from Fat Lizard Brewing Company. This is the very first time I'm doing a sit down review of one of their beers here on the channel. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, whatever you like. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that though, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries and you will find this one in the Finnish playlist, along with many other Riku beers, as I like to call them. But, uh, yeah, let's go on then, and I'll tell you a little bit about Fat Lizard Brewing Company. On to my brewery notes, and I will say a massive shout-out again to Riku for helping me compile these brewery notes for this one. So, Fat Lizard Brewing, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in the Otaniemi district of Espoo in Finland, just across the water from Helsinki, the capital. And this brewery story starts back in 2013, when Heso Yinen and uh, Topo uh, Koskipa built a 20 litre brewing system in Topo's garage. But after brewing with the small kit for a while, they expanded to a 300 litre system after finding a suitable premises for brewing in Espo's uh, Kiburuki area. And at this point, they were joined by Eero Kuko and Topi Karenius uh, in the company. So they built the new 300 litre brew kit themselves out of old commercial kitchen equipment and they allowed uh, this allowed them to brew 30,000 litres of beer per year. And the first commercial beer they released was the 101 California Paleo in 2015 and it went down really quite well actually. Uh, but these, all of the, they developed a few recipes after this and all the first ones that they put out were really well received and so they decided to expand further and in 2017 they moved to their current location in Otaniemi where they had at first a 6,000 litre brew kit and at this point they were only um, selling their beers in kegs and things like this but the new equipment uh, but they got some new equipment a bit later on uh, and that gave them a 300,000 litre per year 
brewery capacity and allowed them to can their beers as well. But a bit later in 2018, they expanded even more. This allowed them to produce 500,000 litres of beer per year, but this also meant that their alcohol tax relief dropped from 30, uh, dropped um, or increased, we should say, no, if it's relief, sorry, it dropped. The, basically, the tax they were paying on alcohol went up from 30% to 50%. So this meant that they were no longer allowed to sell beers over 5.5% ABV from their bottle shop. That is, of course, the limit in Finland. Anything that is above 5.5% ABV has to be sold by Alco, the national uh, alcohol monopoly. So this caused a bit of a problem for them. But in 2021, they reached the 1 million litres of beer per year mark, and they opened a tap room at their brewery the year before that in 2020 so this means that they can sell their stronger beers directly to customers this is one of the good the, the things the areas where Finnish craft brewers are quite lucky they can sell direct to customers at the brewery so this is something I hope they introduce in Sweden at some point uh, these guys also have three restaurants there's one in Oteniemi which opened in 2018 the one in Hertoniemi which opened in 2020 that's put in eastern Helsinki and they've also got one in Helsinki city centre as well which opened in 2020 as well but currently their beers are sold pretty much everywhere in supermarkets across Finland and they produce mainly American styles of beer but also quite a few different lagers and things like this too and they've got a few of their stronger beers currently going through Alco as well. But the big issue for these guys, from what I understand, is getting over. They were When uh, Riku and I actually went to this place, there was that issue with tax, because the way it works in Finland is that the tax you pay on alcohol products depends on the volume, and this was me a measure that the Finnish government brought in to try and help microbreweries. So you quite often find that microbreweries will reach maybe 200,000 litres of beer per year, and then they'll stop expanding at that point so it kind of hinders their business growth a little bit um, but uh, as of May 2023 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 230 different kinds of beer according to Untapped and uh, yeah quite a few different styles in there. Uh, one fun story that Riku actually added into the brewery notes because he thought it was quite interesting was that Fat Lizard actually gained a lot of media attention in 2020 because uh, some guy tried to steal a van full of their beer from the brewery's loading dock and so the, the chairman, the brewery's chairman, uh, Thomas Koskipa, saw this happen and he jumped in his, uh, his vintage car, his uh, Chevy, Chevy Corvette, and chased the thief for a while before driving past him and then blocking the road with his car. So they brewed the Vigilante Mission New England IPA to commemorate this event. So there was um, quite a bit of a, a thing about this in the media, which was quite interesting. And I thought that was quite cool to introduce in the, uh, the brewery history as well. But, um, yeah, um, other than that, I think there isn't anything else we can really say about uh, Fat Lizard Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, though, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped, and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's go on then and have a wee look at uh, this beer itself. So, um, I can't remember how much I paid for this one, actually. It wasn't too much, maybe about three or four euros, something like that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this one is a half litre. Wait, no, I'm telling you lies. It's a 440 milliliter can. can. I actually thought it was a half litre. But you can see uh, the fat lizard is just kind of chilling at the top there. You can see a uh, plain silver top on the can there. This is one of these cans where you pull the entire top off and you can basically drink out the can, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, this one is um, it's brewed in collaboration with Children of uh, Bodom, which is kind of cool. But they, of course, uh, are now no more. I think they disbanded like in 2019, 2020, and then uh, Bodom After Midnight, which was the continuation band, um, stopped because, uh, oh, I forget his name, was it Alex Lyho was his name? He died, unfortunately. So um, yeah, I think they've kept this one going as a kind of tribute to him. But uh, yeah, when I got this one, I actually thought it was uh, I actually thought it was a a Schwarz beer. I thought it was a dark lager, but it turns out it's more of an amber Vienna lager type thing. This one, but yeah, really nicely presented. This one, I just need to see how it goes. It tells you a little bit on the side here. Lake Bodum Lager, a modern take on a classic with a dark twist. Roasted malts and the noble Tettnanger hop make this the perfect beer for socialising, dinner, head banging, or lakeside camping. Water used from Lake Bottom puts this over the top and makes it so good you can bury a few in one go. So beware. And it's hopped with Magnum and Tetnanger. Um, yeah, 
I like that. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. See, hopefully this didn't explode. Oh, it nearly did. <laughs> that nearly exploded in my face. That was fun. So there you can see the top and that's us got it open. But we'll get this guy out into the glass and see what it's all about. Yeah, this is one of the things. This beer has been sitting for a little bit, so the carbonation might just need a wee bit of time to uh, to calm down. did actually get a little bit of a fright when I opened that there, so I'll need to look at that in the video a wee bit later on. But anyway, shit happens when you're doing, when you're doing beer reviews. So, um, yeah, anyway, as you can see, the carbonation on this beer got a little bit excited, but we can live, for that. We can live with that while we have a little look at the appearance and the aroma of this one. So you can see the beer itself poured with about two fingers of a frothy, I would say kind of um, cream coloured head. It does look very, very nice. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass and a few little foamier ones just kind of sitting on top of that. That does look um, very, very nice. You can see in terms of the, uh, the colour of this beer, it's got a lovely, very kind of rich amber note to it, this one. It's almost like a West Coast double IPA to be honest with you, but one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the uh, the bottom of the head there, but uh, overall it does look pretty nice actually. So um, yeah, a few little bits of um, sedimentary particle just kind of floating around in this one, but yeah, it's only it's like tiny little bits of particulate matter in there. But yeah, it looks pretty nice, this one. Remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised unless you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour of your beer as well. Um, but with it, when it comes to most laggers, you don't often have to care about adjuncts being put into the beer, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, this one looks pretty much as you would expect from uh, it looks pretty much as you would expect from a kind of Vienna uh, lager sort of thing so the Vienna lager for me of course there's a few different lager uh, styles we should talk about in this context um, so a lager by definition is a beer that undergoes uh, bottom fermentation low temperature fermentation and there's many different kinds uh, you know you've got the Pilsners uh, from the Czech Republic originally, you've got the Vienna Lagers from Austria, you've got the Helles Blonde Lager, the, the Dunkel Brown Lager and the Schwarzbier, uh, all of which come from Germany. You've got the Box, uh, two very uh, many different kinds of Box. From the Czech Republic you have the Let's, uh, the Svetli Blonde Lager, the Letzak Amber, the Mahogany uh, Dark Brown, kind of Cherny, and you've also got the Black uh, Tmavi as well, so you've got all of these kind of things. But uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see, this is one of the things when you get like Vienna Lagers and uh, Letzaks and things like this, it's always interesting to see because when you get different examples of these from different countries, they often kind of cross the borders a little bit and do different things. But I think we can safely say this is an Amber Lager, but for me, um, since Untapped we're defining this one as a Vienna Lager, one of the things I learned from the Vienna Lagers from actually trying a bunch of Viennese brewed, uh, Viennese micro brewed Vienna Lagers, is that they're a lot more grainy and kind of bread crusty than I thought they were going to be. I always had the impression that it was quite a sweet style of beer, but it's actually a little bit more grainy and dry than you might expect. So I'm curious to see how that turns out in this one. But yeah, I think we don't really need to say much more about the appearance of this beer. Um, in terms of Vienna Lager, if it is a Vienna Lager, the colour of this one is pretty much as you'd expect. And you can see the head has just kind of calmed down a good little bit with this one. So let's have a wee look at the aroma and just see what this beer is all about. Curious about this. Yeah, that does smell pretty nice actually. Yeah, so it does have, it smells like a slightly sweeter and more kind of, um, it smells like a slightly sweeter and more kind of buttery Vienna Lager if we can call it that. So um, yeah, I certainly like how that pieces together. Definitely. Um, on the... Other than that, it's a little bit difficult to say from the aroma whether it's going to uh, come into the Vienna Lager category totally, but still, we'll need to see. Uh, and one of the other things to point out, if it is a Vienna Lager, the Austrians have their own hot producing region, which I believe is called the Upper Viertal, um, the Upper Quarter. Um, so, yeah. 
the Austrian hops are quite interesting for sure. But yeah, aroma-wise, this one is quite nice. You get a lot of nice breadiness out of it. You've got sweetness in there, a little bit of fruity character, and you've got that noble type, Central European noble hop type note coming out of it. Let's just try and break this down, though, and describe what's going on in this beer a little bit more uh, in depth with the aroma. So, for me, the backbone of the beer, you've got a good little bit of, um, you've got a nice little bit of a kind of fresh white bready bread crust in there. That smells really nice. A little bit of woodiness in there, which is great. Um, so yeah, fresh white bready bread crust, a little bit of woodiness. You've got a little bit of um, kind of, you do have a little bit of Jacob's cream cracker coming out of this one, which I really like. Um, and then you also have um, the you've got the bread sitting above that, so you've got this nice kind of smooth um, and quite dense, like wholemeal brown bready character to the beer, which I really do enjoy. And then yeah, above that, yeah, above all of that, you have a nice little bit of. Um, Yeah, above all of that, you have a nice little bit of white bread in there too, which is good. And the, the bready character in this beer is pretty dense, actually, which is, is quite interesting. Like I say, um, if I'm comparing this to the Vienna lagers I've had, it doesn't quite have the kind of graininess and brown bready graininess that, um, that you would normally expect from a Vienna lager style. It has a little bit more of a kind of Czech uh, Letzak type note to it. It has a little bit of that more kind of uh, yeasty, bready smoothness that you might expect from a Czech amber lager, really. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. But above that, you certainly, you get a little bit of sweet caramel in there. There's a little bit of McVitie's Digestive Biscuit. Um, so, yeah, as I say, a little bit of McVitie's Digestive Biscuit, a little bit of a sweet caramel, and you've also got a little bit of a kind of Werther's Original Butter Candy, Butterscotchy, type thing coming out of this beer too. So that's kind of interesting, I have to say that actually. So the malty side of this one, very very smooth I have to say, I'm really curious to see how this is actually going to turn out in the um, in the flavour. So uh, I think that covers everything we need to say about the malty and yeasty side of the beer. On the hoppy side of things, it's kind of what you'd expect if you know these hops. There's a little bit of earthiness in there and it's quite a smooth and slightly bright earthiness. You've also got a little bit of herbal character in there, uh, which is great. And then you've also got a good little bit of a kind of floral, aromatic uh, sort of thing coming out of this one. So yeah, nice little bit of floral aromaticity, a little bit of a kind of lighter and wetter grassy note as well. And um, yeah, I do think that goes together pretty nicely in a sense. Uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> aroma-wise, this is pretty nice in that sense for sure. But, um, yeah, the green component is pretty much what you'd expect from German noble hops. Tatnanger, of course, come from Baden-Württemberg. Um, and they always give you, German hops always give you a nice bright, uh, bright grassiness and floral note on it. So you get quite a bit of that out of this one. Um, on the fruity side of things, it's kind of what you'd expect as well. Um, so you have a little bit, dropping my keys out of my pocket, um, you've also got a little bit of a, okay, you've got a mix of fruity character in this one, so there's a wee bit of like an oil, like a little bit of sultana, you know, dry white green grapes. You've also got a good little bit of oily pear coming out of this one, which I certainly do enjoy. And then you've also, there's a wee touch of apricot and things in there as well, which, um, which I do quite like too. Um... So yeah, a wee tiny bit of dried apricot in there, but then I'm also getting a wee bit of a, I get like a little tiny hint of a kind of orangey character out of this one and a wee bit of a lemony lime. So the way that that goes together for me is really, really very nice actually. So um, yeah, interesting stuff with this one. It goes together really nicely for sure. Um, so the way that goes together. Is, um, is pretty nice. It's quite an interesting one, this. I'm more curious with this to see how it turns out in the flavour because, like I say, it doesn't say on the can specifically that it's a Vienna Lager, but that's what it's listed as on uh, on Untapped. And I was I'm pretty sure when I got this one, you know, with it being late, uh, Children of Bodom, Black Metal and all these kind of things, I thought it was going to be a Schwarzbier, kind of more symbolism and stuff. 
But uh, yeah, it's certainly the aroma of this one strikes me as being a little bit more akin to a Czech um, kind of Letzak type beer. So yeah, that's interesting too. But let's put the rest of it out of the can and into the glass and then we'll have a taste of this one. As I always say though, take a wee bit of time to enjoy the aroma of these beers before you get stuck into them. But yeah, this one is the Lake Bodom uh, Lager from uh, Fat Lizard Brewing Company on the Alto University campus in Otaniemi, Espoo, just across the water from Helsinki in the south of Finland. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull, cheers, keepies. Pretty nice, actually. Really nice, kind of malty, very smooth lager beer. For me, this is pretty interesting because it actually is. I really wondered from the aroma of this if it was going to be like some of these um, Czech beer hall type um, type lager beers, and it, it has. It really has turned out like that. So. Uh, for me, the yeah, for me the um, this really is nice. It's got that big bready smoothness to it. It's got a lovely. Um, it's this one is yeah, quite a yeasty kind of raw almost yeah, brew house type brow house type lager beer. This one. Good little bit of green component to it, and you've also got the nice kind of oily fruitiness out of it. So it's really, yeah, really quite interesting beer, this one. I have to say, you know, thumbs up to um, to Fat Lizard for this. This is quite interesting and quite different to what I've had um, from a Vienna Lager in quite a wee while. Um, or as I say, a Czech Letzak. I think it's kind of, to be honest, it is kind of somewhere in the middle of these two, because you do get a little bit more of the kind of graininess and stuff that you'd expect from the Vienna Lager further into the aftertaste, so... Yeah, interesting stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah, certainly I have to say straight off, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. You guys watching the channel know that I'm a bit of a fan of the more malty and kind of sweet beers. So this one certainly hasn't, uh, certainly hasn't disappointed in that sense either. Um, yeah, so let's piece everything, let's piece everything together with this one actually. Um, yeah, so where do we go with this? Uh, middle third of your palate then. Um, backbone of this beer, you get that, you get a lovely little bit of that kind of bread crusty, fresh, wholemeal, brown bready character. Like I say, the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer, the drier it gets. And it's that drier, more greeny character that would, for me, define a Vienna Lager. So, like I say, for me, this one is a little bit. It's got the yeast, the more yeasty character and things that you would expect of a Czech Brauhaus type, um, you know, a Czech Brauhaus type, um, how would we say, the, the Czech Brauhaus type, um, Oh, uh, let's act beers, that went right on my head. But it's also in the aftertaste, you've got a bit more of the greenish you'd expect to the Vienna Lager. So for me, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. On the, um, yeah, on the, uh, on top of the kind of bread crusty character, what I would say is that further forward on that middle third of your palate, you start to get a little bit of woodiness in there. Then you get a wee bit of Jacob's Cream Cracker sitting above it too, which is quite nice. So yeah, a bit of, as I say, the bread crusty notes in there, the quite dry bread crusty notes, a little bit of woodiness, kind of Jacob's Cream Cracker. Then you get quite a little bit of that dry, almost rye bready character coming out of this one. Above that, you've got a little bit of a wholemeal kind of bready note in there and then you have a little bit of that kind of fluffy white bready character too so the way that that goes together I think is really quite nice actually so 
So, um, yeah, <coughs> pardon me. The mix of braids in this one is quite interesting, and the braid is almost giving you just that little bit of sweetness too. So the rye braid's quite dry. The brown braid has a little bit of sweetness to it, and the white and the the white braidy character also has a good little bit of um, sweetness to it as well. Above the white braid, you've got that nice kind of. Um, you do have a nice little bit of that more. You have a nice little bit of that more. Uh, Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy type thing uh, coming out of the beer. So that's that's quite interesting. Yeah, you have that. Yeah, Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy type note, and then above all of that, you've got a kind of like in the dead centre of your palate, you've got a little bit of that sweet caramelly note in there. But above the kind of butter candy, butterscotch, you get a little bit of McVitie's digestive biscuity type character. Um, so yeah, that's quite interesting with this one. As I say, this beer for me, it really kind of straddles the line between, it's mo it is more Vienna Lager, I can see exactly why um, this one has been categorised and untapped as a Vienna Lager, but it does for me also have a little bit of the kind of Czech uh, Letzak type character to it as well, so that's definitely interesting. So yeah, I do like how yeah I like how that pieces together in this one. Um, yeah, so on the on top of that, you have yeah on top of the um, yeah I think that well to be honest I think that's everything we really need to say about the middle third of your palate. Then. So if we go to the back third of the palate. You've got that night, that border region between middle and back thirty part where you can feel there's a nice little bit of bready build up in there, a nice little bit of kind of graininess and stuff coming out of the beer, which is great. Then the base of that back thirty palette, you've got a more kind of grainy. You do have a little bit of a more kind of grainy and um, how would we say? Um, you, you know what I've always said is that on the back. Like further back on the palate, the more grainy, bitter flavours come out a little bit more, whereas going further forward, you get the sweeter uh, flavours coming out. So you can definitely feel the layers on the back of the palate are quite similar, but they just feel a little bit drier and more grainy. So you can feel on the base of that back third of the palate, you've got the bread crusty notes in there, which are drier and more grainy. You've got a little bit of Jacob's Cream Cracker sitting above that. Then you've got the rye bready layer, which feels a little bit lighter and more taller and airy. The wholemeal brown bready character as well which again feels a little bit lighter and more airy, and then the white bready character too, which also feels a little bit lighter and more airy. So yeah, the way that goes together in this one is, is quite interesting. So, um, yeah, it's... Um, the yeah the brady characters in this one are quite nice but definitely on the, as I say on the back third of the palate a little bit lighter more airy then you can feel a little bit of a there is a little bit of the kind of dry butterscotchy butter candy note just creeps over into the back third of the palate and sits on top of all these bready notes and then above everything else you have this big kind of yeasty bready character in there so it's like a very dry bready yeasty sort of thing that comes out of this one um and for me, that's quite um, that is quite interesting as well. So, um, yeah, the way it, the way it goes together is pretty interesting. But on the um, yeah, on the um, on top of that, you've got a little bit more of a kind of yeast. The, the kind of yeasty card you get out of this one is like a very dry brown woody crackery farmhouse bread. It's got a little bit of an almost kind of peppery spice to it. There is a little touch of honeycomb in there. I always get a bit of honeycomb on these um, on the back third of the palate though. So yeah, um, take that with a bit of a pinch of salt. But definitely back third of the palate you can feel the flavour. It is taller Then as you move further forward as you move further forward into the middle third of your palate the flavour just condenses down and squashes together that little bit more. So again, yeah, I quite like how that goes together. On the uh, on the hoppy side of things, then back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there. So I do like how that goes together. So yeah, nice little bit of earthiness there, 
As you move further forward, there's a good little bit of herbal character, and as you push toward the front corners of the palette, you've got uh, as you push forward toward the kind of front corners of the palette, um, you get a nice little bit more of a kind of you get more of a kind of floral aromatic sort of thing coming out of this beer too. So yeah, the way this beer goes together is quite nice in that sense. But yeah, the earthy and herbal sort of thing builds a good bridge with the more grainy character you get out of this beer the further into the aftertaste that you go. But yeah, around the front curve of the palate you've got a wee bit of lighter grassiness in there. And the grassiness does have a little bit more zestiness to it as well. We do have to remember that this beer has been sitting for a little bit so it's not in its prime freshness. These, the green component of this beer may have been, uh, have kind of dropped back a little bit but still with a Vienna Lager, it's, it is a more malt forward kind of beer to be honest with you. So it should be all right. It really should be okay. Um, yeah. So in terms of the, uh, yeah, in terms of the hoppy side of things, I think that's everything we need to say. So let's look at the front third of your palate and the fruity side of the beer. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get a nice little bit of kind of brown bready build up in there, a nice little bit of a smooth kind of brown bready thing as well. The base of that front third of your palate, you've got a little bit of a more kind of grainy, as I say, you got a little bit of a more kind of grainy, um, brown bready base in there. You've got a bit of cracker, then a, uh, you've got a little bit of cracker, and then you have a little bit more of a kind of, I would say, like a sweeter uh, brown bread. Then you've got some nice oily, fruity characters coming out on top of that as well, which I do like. So, um, on the uh, on the fruity side of things then, you, as I say, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. At the back of that front third of your palate, you get this nice kind of oily, uh, I would say, yeah, you get a little bit of this more kind of oily, um, yeah, oily sultana peary type thing coming out of this one so again I, I really like how that goes together nice oily sultana peary type notes uh, and well o yeah, oily sultana dry white green grapes but as you move further forward into the middle of that uh, front third of your palate there's these big oily um, there's these big oily peary notes and then as you move to the front kind of tip of your tongue you can feel that it freshens up you get a little touch of a very slight green apple coming out of this one and maybe a tiny little hint of like a black currant um, re like black currenty ready fruit coming out of the beer and these are all things that you can get from Vienna Lagos of course but like I say the thing about this beer for me if we're talking stylistically the aftertaste is definitely Vienna Lager and a lot of the flavour components are Vienna Lager but that part of me slightly more kind of big bready yeasty thing reminds me also a little bit of a Czech a, a, a kind of um, brew pub um, Czech Letzak beer, so that's worth pointing out as well. Um, yeah, for me that's really that's really quite interesting in this one, so it gets a thumbs up from me in that regard. Um, yeah, on the um, let's see, I mean on the uh, the flavour side of things, I think that's everything we really need to say about this beer actually. So. Um, I would say, in terms of the mouthfeel then, just to round off this review. For me, this beer's kind of bottom end of mid-bodied, top end of light-bodied. Carbonation is, a, is quite smooth in this one. It did have a little bit of crispness in the beginning, but I think that was just you know a bit of pressure in the can. But yeah, the carbonation in this beer has smoothed out very, very nicely. Uh, IBU wise I think this beer is about a standard 20 IBUs, there's a good little bit of dryness in here and smoothness as well which counts as dryness, you could mix up a little bit of that with the hoppy bitterness so that's worth bearing in mind as well uh, but then yeah on top of the yeah on top of the kind of bready characters and things that come out of this beer um, yeah you've got that nice kind of grainy bready base, smooth bread in the middle, lovely bit of kind of sweet dryness in there and then, yeah, you've got a lovely little bit of a juicy kind of fruity character as well. So the way that everything um, goes together in this one is really quite nice. It's quite a wet fruity note and kind of slightly more oily. So, um, yeah, I do like how this, um, how this beer 
goes together actually. It's, uh, it's really nicely done. As I say, it leans more toward the Vienna Lager, but there's a little bit of Czech let sack in there too. But an interesting one, and one that certainly has made me think a wee bit. But yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. But yeah, this was the Lake Bodum Lager at 5% ABV, a Vienna Lager with a little bit of Czech Letzak character from Fat Lizard Brewing Company on the Alto University campus, uh, Otteniemi in Espoo, just across the water from Helsinki in Finland. Once again, a big, keep, uh, massive keepus and kitos to Riku for making this review possible, and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Fat Lizard Brewing Company as well. Let me know what your favourite Children of Bodom song is too. And I will see you guys in the next review. Like I said, more finished reviews coming up in the next couple of weeks, so keep your eyes peeled. Slanjut, Skull, Kepis, and Kitos. Cheers just now. <laughs>